Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're having a fabulous day. In today's video, we're going to be talking about mineralogy, which is the study of minerals, optical microscopes, digital microscopes, pros and cons of each. I have this new digital microscope that I recently received in the mail, and I've been working with it for a while now, and I thought we could discuss it. Full disclosure, I reached out to the manufacturer of this and asked for it and got it for free. That said, they're not watching this video ahead of time. They're not approving of anything I say. And actually, some aspects of this thing kind of suck. They kind of suck. Um, should be, uh, shouldn't be that big of a surprise when we talk about the price points here and what they can and cannot do. And uh, we'll hop right into it. Before we talk about the digital, I want to talk about this. This is a trinocular optical microscope. We have an XYZ platform down at the bottom, a ring light, two holes for looking in, an adapter, a Canon 70D body, and this is what I use to primarily look at minerals, take photos of minerals using the camera, and uh, it's, it's great. And I'll kind of give you a little bit of a taste of what that is like out here right now. Normally I do this up in my office, but this works. So right down here, you can see we have a very little tiny specimen. And right here, you can see on the camera, we can kind of see it now. Typically, the way I do my inspection of minerals is, uh, well, I put under the microscope, I would zoom in, make any little adjustments. I'm just using my hand right now, but I would typically have it taped down, use my XYZ platform to move it around, and we can start to very clearly here, very clearly see structure. We can see that piece of anal seam right there. And we can take a whole bunch of photos, which is that typically what I do. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of what that's like you can clearly see that some aspects of this are in focus and others are not. So I take a whole long series of photos, uh, anywhere between 50 to 100. I put them in special image stacking software and it goes through and compiles a stack of images and then takes the piece of each slice of the image, which is in focus and builds a composite photo. I then take that into uh, photo editing software and I manipulate the image to make it visually match what I see and uh, we end up with end result images kind of like this here and I think it looks quite good you know it's um it it looks good we can clearly see what it is we're looking at the main problem with the optical microscope and this setup is the price the price is a lot okay the microscope, the XYZ platform, the adapter, the DSLR, um, it's $1,300, right? That's a lot. That's out of reach for most people. This thing back here, nowhere near $1,300. So we're going to put this aside. Um, you know how I kind of use this for taking pictures of tiny minerals that I want to study, just like that guy right there. So... Let's uh, turn our focus to this digital microscope. Currently the microscope is on. I have a rock under here that I'm looking at. And uh, I got this. And uh, you know, we have a little base. We have a couple of gooseneck lights. It came with some stuff for shooting slot, you know, looking at slides under it. That's pretty unimportant to me. We have a uh, little kind of not great ability to Move the whole head up and down. It's a little sticky. Um, not very smooth like this. Not smooth at all, you know. Um, this is clearly uh, a better built device than this guy here. And uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the problems I faced with this initially. When I got this, I treated it like my optical in that I immediately took some small specimens and I started trying to take photos and do image stacking with it 
and the the images they're potato images right this is one of the best photos that i was able to produce and stack for you and it does not look good it looks bad it looks bad there's weird artifacting it's not good as well there is dead pixels already on it and i can see that right here these little red dots are dead pixels and when you stack you get this long trail of dead pixels so not impressed out of the box or something that's like 150 bucks um and I tried for several days to produce high quality images with it and I was not able to do it. Now, if we're looking at this purely from the perspective of can we see structure of what it is that we're looking at, you can still obviously see the structure with it, even with these potato quality photos. That's when I turned my attention to the video aspect of it. It comes with a 32 gigabyte SD card, which is pretty good. Memory is like dirt cheap though. You can buy a 32 gigabyte SD card for like basically nothing on Amazon. So big whoop there. Uh, so I uh, took my four specimens here that I used for the initial photos with the optical and put them under here. And man, um, I'm kind of impressed by this. Now we'll do this live here because this does have a record feature, which is really nice. Now that brings up the other aspect. A lot of the, the microscope videos out there, I would call them, wow, look at this videos, where people get these things for free, kind of the same way I did. They put something under it and they're just like, wow, look at that, that's amazing. They're usually looking at flat things, flat stuff. So like your circuit boards, stamps, watches, things like that not three-dimensional objects like minerals. So that's why I wanted to test this. The other ones, the cheapo ones, not very good. Um, if we simply take one of these, we can, this has a couple of benefits. It has a remote and a platform, which means I can uh, simply hit the record here and we'll flip over to that. And you're now looking at this and we will take that same piece of anal seam and we'll stick that under here. We will focus it. And right there, it is extremely obvious what the structure of this is. That looks pretty good for something so, so affordable. Now we can switch this out with some other specimens here like that. That is very clearly clearly a piece of clinoptolite. Uh, you know, we can adjust with the remote the intensity of the light and we can get a, get video just like this here, which is quite, quite good. It really is quite, quite good for what, what you spend. Um, we can put a piece of azurite under here and look at that. We can move it around. We can adjust our lighting. Absolutely uh, quality video. I don't really understand how the pictures can be so atrocious while the video being rather high quality for what it, it really is. Once again, we can put another specimen under here. And we can clearly, clearly see the structure here. I'm just I'm surprised at this. Now, big benefit, hands-off operation, the lights, the, all of that. That is very, very good. And uh, the, the zoom feature is quite bad. You know, we can kind of zoom in here a little bit. Um, but, you know, digital zooms and stuff uh, just creates terrible quality images. I mean, what's important here, right, is the resolution that we get, right? Who cares about uh, magnification? What matters is resolution. How sharp is the picture? Can you determine what it is that you're looking at? That's the important part. All these companies, they all lie about the magnification. They say they're like 2000, whatever. You're not getting 2000 magnification with this thing, regardless of the... Well, you're not getting 2000 with good resolution, regardless of what uh, they say. <laughs> but these are very, um, these are very nice 
and prepared specimens here. And uh, I want to talk about how I plan on using this out in the field though. This right here is an EcoFlow power supply box. Now, I bought this with my own money. They're not sponsoring nothing. And I bought this so that when me and Sarah go on our rock hunting adventures and we're out for, you know, uh, two, three, four, five days, this gets charged up by the car, right? We have a we have plugs here, right? So it gets charged up by the car and I can output whatever. I can keep my cameras plugged in and charged. I can, you know, we have a, a plug-in electric cooler that runs off this. It works great. It's plenty big for what I want to do. As I've been out here filming and recording here, uh, the digital microscope has been plugged in to the power supply. So I already have this big power supply. I already bring it with us on our trips. And now I can use this little digital microscope to look at the things that we find. The reason for this is, I mean, although the, the jeweler's loop is very nice, right? Everybody should have a jeweler's loop. The lights in these things, like this one has a little built-in light. It really is not great. You have to kind of have the sun basically to your back, shining through at the proper angle so that you can determine what it is you're looking at. And even with that, it, there's no guarantee that it's going to be uh, good enough. And like we already said, you're only kind of seeing a little slice of that with your jeweler's loop. That's where this comes in. I could very easily now bring this with me, plug it in over here to my power supply, take a rock just like this that has some interesting pockets, right? We have some interesting pockets right here. I want to determine what that is, you know, sitting in camp in the evening. I can throw it under here. I can move my lights around, get it where I need it to be. Just like that right there. Aim some lights in here, you know. Focus. Focus, okay. And I can start to see the structure of these minerals in here and I can mess around with my lighting. And as you can obviously see uh, on the right hand side, the pocket, which is closest to the surface, closest to the lens is out of focus. And uh, the stuff deeper in is in focus and we can move that around a little bit and see what's happening here. And what we have is a decent amount of cobazite Okay, we have cobazite, and it looks a little bit like in the background, we have some uh, a bedding of philipsite, and I can clearly see what we have, which is, makes me very, very happy. Had I had this before, I might, you know, plug this in, in an area in which I'm collecting and throw these small rocks under it and check it out. I think I could absolutely do this and uh, it will break down into a very small, small package. My takeaway is that these digital microscopes, although they will not produce the most fantastic images, they produce high enough quality images to study small minerals, both in your shop, in an office, in the field, and it's very, easy thing to take with you, especially if you have a battery pack to use it out in the field. I also see some alternative uses for this device that I can use at maybe some public events. And uh, overall, I'm mildly satisfied with this as a device. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. Hopefully you found this to be informative. Please go check out my website, currentlyrockhounding.com. Subscribe here on YouTube so you don't miss other videos similar to this. I put a lot of effort into these. And uh, with that said, we'll leave this one here and I'll talk to you on the next video.